I have done it. I've developed a script, a Romanized script, using the principles of Vietnamese that can be used for the Thai language. Not only Central Thai, but this same script can be used for all Thai languages. And actually, you could probably use it to write Vietnamese and Chinese as well. So make sure you stick to the end because you're going to need to go through this journey to get there. Now, this is part three in my trilogy of designing a Vietnamese style romanization script for the Thai language. After all, many of the sounds, the tones, the vowels, the consonants of Vietnamese are very similar to Thai. So if Vietnamese can use a romanized system, well, why can't Thai? If you've missed the first two clips in this series, you're gonna wanna watch them because there's a lot of background knowledge that you'll need. So make sure you go back and watch the first clip where we did all of the vowels and the second clip where I brought up the issues that relate to consonants and tones because they're interlinked. This whole process isn't just a fun thought exercise, but through this journey, you've probably learned more about Vietnamese, Thai and Chinese than you'd ever care to know. And this lesson is no exception. We're gonna take a deep dive into Thai, Vietnamese and Chinese. And by the end of it, we're gonna have this robust romanization system that can be used for any Thai dialect. You ready? Let's go. So first of all, let's look at the consonants in Thai. Now, if you remember, this is my Indic consonant chart. Now this originally came from the Brahmic system, the Indic system. Let me just turn off the letters so you can just see these romanized letters letters for Sanskrit. You had ga. Now notice this is a stopped throat. You can see this picture here, the throat stopped. Ka. The second column is aspirated. In Indic languages, this third one, g, 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 is like a G in English. It's voiced and you can see my voice is turned on there, but the throat is interestingly stopped at the beginning, g. And then you have in the Indic languages, g, that voiced aspirated sound does not really exist in any Thai, Chinese or Vietnamese language. So in languages that use this system, most of the time, this letter and this letter are gonna sound the same. And this aspiration over the voicing is lost. In Thai, all the voicing is lost, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then you have nasal. So this is through the nose. So this is ng. So ka, ka, ga, ga, ng. Now you might look at this here and say, well, why don't we just use this romanization system? Well, this romanization system is IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. And quite frankly, a lot of people are scared of it. They don't want to see these freaky looking symbols. So this one here with a tail going this way is nye. This one here with a tail going that way is na, a retroflex na. This one here with a tail curling in is nga. Kind of looks like the Thai letter ngongu. But basically, this is the international phonetic alphabet and many people have said it's not really viable to use as a national script. So let's come to Thai then. If we have a look at Thai, look at this. The voicing is lost. So this has gone from stop throat, just like in Sanskrit. So we've got ka, 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 nga. So these are nasal and all of these voicing from these two columns here have been lost. Now, originally in Thai, they were actually voiced. So for example, the word for buffalo, kwai, used to be guai. And you would notice if you go to Chiang Mai or Northern Thai, this whole column here, so for example, if I say the word for soldier, tahan, that's using this t here. Let me just turn the letter on for a moment. So that's using this tahan in Chiang Mai. This would be tahan. Or if I said the word pan for a plate, it would be pan. So basically the voicing from this index sound, b, has been lost. But rather than going totally unvoiced to a p, pan, like we have in standard central Thai, in the north, it turns into pan. So this whole column here in northern Thai is actually pronounced like this column here. And this comes down to it. How do we come up with a spelling system that's not just a snapshot of 2022 Bangkok Thai, but it's a system just like in Vietnam, you can spell a word, but no matter where you come from. So if it were Vietnamese, if you come from the North, the Central, the South, you read the same Vietnamese word, the same spelling, but you know how to interpret in your own dialect. Con dao. Con dao. Con dao. Con dao. Now, how do we do this in Roman script for Thai? Because in Chiang Mai, it's pronounced differently. In Isan, some of these letters are pronounced differently. For example, this letter here in Isan, this is 
Ha. So if I wanted to say school in modern Thai, I would say Rong Rian, which I wouldn't really. I'd say Long Lian because traditionally there was no actual R sound in Thai. This was forced in. So Long Lian actually sounds more like an L in Bangkok Thai, but in Isan it is Hong Hian as it is in the north. And so are we going to change the actual Roman letters maybe? Or is there a way that the native speakers of a given dialect could just look at the spelling and know, oh, this is how we say this letter and look at the same spelling, but pronounce it correctly in their dialect. And then finally, there are tones. Now, if you read Thai, you would know that this column here, we call the middle class, this first column, and they're all the ones that are stopped in the throat. Tones are not pitches. Tones are throat positions. The pitch is just a byproduct. And so basically what you're saying with tones or tone markers is we have stopped throat letters. We have aspirated letters. So these ones with puffs of air. Notice that all of these S E sounds, they're called sibilants. Um, that was originally sh, sh, s, that all turned to just a S, s in Thai. These are all also high class because try and say s, you have to puff air over the letter. So s is also a high class you will see there. And so of course is the letter H because H is the mascot for puffing air. And so this is why in some Thai words, when they turn into a high class, you actually put this sound before the letter because we actually had, for example, a, a puffy air M or a, a puffy air L, like in the word lie, which is now lie, meaning many, or the word for dog, which turned to ma. That has this H in front of it in the spelling in Thai. So you know that this was originally a puffy sound. So we know what tone to put in. In modern Thai, it was this rising tone. And then we have the stop throat. And this letter here, oh, uh, Ang, is the representative or the mascot of the throat or the stop throat or base throat position. So this is actually a really beautiful map, but we're not wanting to use Thai letters. How can we put this into a Romanized script that is robust enough to use in everyday life? And no matter where a Thai comes from, they can use the script correctly and their tones are interpreted correctly. So recap, we have the stop throat, which we call middle class. We have the high class or puffy. And then we have the normal voiced, which have actually lost their voicing, except for these nasal ones, these mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. These are nasal sounds. So before we do that, I just want to recap once more, like we did in the last session, Vietnamese tones and tone markers. So we're looking here at Vietnamese tones. Now these tones are based on Northern Vietnamese. So we have the ngang, that's this flat tone. And notice it's elevated a bit. Then we have the huyen. Okay, this is going huyen. And here it says either two to one, three to one, huyen. Here we have sat. And you can see it's going three to five. Some might be two to four. When I say three to five, two to four, one is the lowest part of my voice. Five is the highest part of my voice. So this would be sat, sat. Some dialects would be sat or shak. It depends where you are. Then we have this heavy tone, na, na or nang, depending on where you are. Then we have the hoi tone or hoi tone, depending on where you are. And finally, we have this broken tone in Northern Vietnamese is ngã. Now, have a look at the symbols they've used here. For this flat one, no symbol. For this huyen, it's this falling stroke. I guess if you're watching your way, we falling stroke going down. Then for the sạc tone, it's actually going up that way. For the nạc tone, it's a dot underneath. Hoi, it's like the top part of a question mark. And ngã. It's like this little tilde on top of the letter. So we have ngang huyen sak nang hoi nga. And these actually map beautifully to the traditional Chinese tone system. So before we go there, let me show you how that worked. Traditionally in Chinese, we had this exact same sound system as we have in Thai. So we have aspirated, ka, we have stopped throat, ga, and we have voiced, ga, and we actually had nasal as well, which I'll just write as NG here. The IPA for that is of course this. So that would be nga. And then the say say from the lips, this would be pa, pa, ba, and this one would be ma. So in Chinese, we'd have what was divided into zhuo, which were these muddy sounds, and qing, which were clean sounds. 
Now, these muddy sounds, we would actually have full zuo. This is the character for full chuan, so this is chuan zuo. And then this character here, this is ci. Now, you might know this in Chinese, yi ci, liang ci, for times, but here it means a portion of, so this is partially zuo, which is your nasals. And then here we also have qing, so we have full qing, quan qing, and this is partial, ci qing. So, qing is clean, zuo is muddy, so voiced versus unvoiced. And then we have the aspirate would be quan qing, and then the stop throat would be ci qing. Now, isn't that crazy? We have exactly the same system as we see in Thai, in Chinese. Now, if you've ever learned Chinese, you would learn that we have what's called yin and yang tones. So basically the way it worked, in middle, older Chinese, anything that was unvoiced, so these qing, would tend to be in a higher register of the voice. Anything that was in the voiced section would be in this lower region. And so what happened, the Chinese would say, well, let's just break this into two segments of the voice. Anything that is unvoiced, let's call these yin. So you'd know the symbol, yin and yang. So this is going to be yin here. And anything that is in this lower portion of the voice, we're going to call yang because they were voiced. And so Chinese syllables are broken into traditionally unvoiced, which are yin, and traditionally voiced, which are yang, and traditionally the yin were in this higher portion and the yang were in this lower portion. Now you'd remember in the last clip, we also had different voice characteristics. So originally we had normal voice, which was called ping. I'll write this here. We had this shang, which was originally a glottal stop at the end. So ma, ma, which turned into the shang sheng. So I'll just write here, shang, actually, originally this was pronounced sang or xiang, but in modern Mandarin, it's shang. This is ping shang. And then we had what we call the departing tone. Now we call it in modern Chinese, chu. This was originally a final s, but this s, just like I mentioned with the Thai, how s, you need to open your throat to aspirate that H over an S. Well, that's exactly what happened in Chinese. And so a final S before it was a tonal language. So for example, the word mas turned into ma, turned into ma, and that became a departing tone. So this was aspirated ending while this was stopped throat ending. And then we had a final stopped ending, which we call ru or entering. So this ru sheng was basically a final P, a final T, or a final K. For example, ma, 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 any of these final cutoff sounds were ru. So now what do we have? We have this matrix of yin, which was originally in the high portion of the voice, and yang, which was originally in the low portion of the voice. Now, let's grab the Vietnamese tone. If we have a look at this table here, we can see in Vietnamese, they have exactly the same thing. By the way, in Chinese, this normal voice, anything that wasn't normal voice, we call this the oblique tone. So that's the shang chu and ru were basically non-normal. You had actually a character for that. But look at this. We have a direct mapping from Vietnamese to these tonal classes in Chinese, which actually map to Thai as well. So if we have a look at this now, we can see that Vietnamese tones will be, if you have the yin ping, the normal voice of the yin, turned into ngang tone, that's no tone marker. If you had the yang version, so the voiced version of the ping, this would turn into Vietnamese, the huyen tone, so this stroke going down. If you had the shang tones of Chinese, the yin version would be hoi, this sort of top part of a question mark, and the yang version would be the nga, which is the broken tone in Northern Vietnamese, or in Southern Vietnamese, it just ends to nga. These two actually sound the same. And you can see why, because they've originated from the same tone in Chinese. And then we have the chu, the exiting or departing tone. So this is this sak or shak tone in Vietnamese, and it's a stroke going up. And then we have the nak. Now that's the same word nak in Thai meaning heavy, nang, nang. 
or nang in southern Vietnamese means heavy also and it's this dot underneath and then for these entering tones basically Vietnamese took these tones here and said well look they make the same sound and that actually happens across Thai you'll see in a moment and it happens in many Chinese dialects where these actually correspond or sometimes it's these two but they said okay we're just going to use the same marker because we know the difference between ma and ma the fact that it's got this d or a ma a p or a ma k at the end we know it's dead it's this entering tone and so we will just put this same tone marker now let's see then how this maps to Thai in Thai if I use just this ma so basically this is a m okay and this is ah so that means m a ma and this is that letter we meant for an h so I'm at the moment going to use an h to label anything that was puffed air so I'll show you what I mean. So if you've done with me get any boxes, you would know this map. What I'm going to do at the moment is just let's just ignore this row here because these are particular only to a few dialects of Thai and it's not relevant at the moment. So basically this top one here is the aspirate, right? So this would basically be what we had in the Qing Sheng aspirated or the yin. So you can see here I'm going to write Yin, this is the Chinese character for Yin. And then you can see here down on this one, this is also Yin, but it is the half Qing because they are the stop throat. And so I'll just call this Ci Yin. And so they would be these stop throat versions. We actually had a stop throat M, Ba, but that's Bo in Thai. Okay, so if we have a look at this, we have and so the way it would work is I would write all of these but with the corresponding tone markers. So this would be ma 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 ma. Remember that's a short vowel ma. And then this one, let's just put a ba because it's the stop throat. So this would be ba 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 ba. And if that's short, that would be ba ba. And then this final one here would be again ma without the h ma 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 with a short and then ma with a long so i haven't put these tone markers in yet but this is the grid that we will be looking at and if you see here even though this is stop throat in chinese this is the yin and stop throat here is the yang we just know the nature of these stop throat sounds Ba, ba, because there's stop throat over it. So we know just by hearing this, ba, ba, this is going to be uh, yin because it's stopped throat. And we know from the spelling at the moment that this is going to be the original aspirated. So again, it would be this yin version. And then we have the voiced version. So ma, 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 ma. Let's bring this back to Vietnamese. So I'm going to write the Thai words in green here. So Ngang. If I were to write this according to what we just had there, it would be ho mo a uh, because that's got that aspiration there. So it would originally be ho mo a, uh, no tone marker. Okay. Then the next one would be if we have the ping but no aspiration, so it's a normal voice. So I can just write mo a. Uh, but you notice here the tone marker that they use is this huyen. So I would put that huyen there. So as soon as I see mo a ah with a huyen, I know that it's going to be this yin ping, the normal voice, but in the lower register. Now have a look here. If I've got no tone marker, well, I know already then that it's from this originally aspirated. So I don't actually need this H in the beginning. I can just write ma without any tone marker and I know that originally came from this ping yin or yin ping category. And so I don't even need the hurt written there. I know no tone marker means it's come from this box here. Now let's have a look here then. What would this next one? If I leave the in Thai, we would write ho, mo, a uh, and this shang. Now you would remember that shang was originally this meito there. And so if I were to write that, ho mo a mi to, I could just write mo a uh, and what's the Vietnamese tone? This hoi. So that would be the equivalent of me writing this. Now, what would this one be? Okay, so this one here, we have 
this would be normal mo ah. Uh, but because it's shang, we put a mei to. So actually, that would be ma ma for horse in Thai. If I were to write this in this system here, we're using the ngā Vietnamese tone markers. That would be mo ah uh, with a ngā over it. Okay. I'll just write here mei to. That's the mei to tone marker from Thai, and this is mei ek. So traditionally, mei ek over these ones here. So shak, I would write this like this. So ho mo ah uh, mei ek would be ma in Bangkok Thai. So let's just drop the H off because we don't need it. We just write more R and the shak tone. So we know that if we have this sak tone over any letter here, it's going to be as though it had this ha because it originally came from the aspirated chu. And then again, we have a look here. It's just a normal more R mei ek. So like in the ma ma noodles, ma ma ma. And so we would write this more R with the nak tone underneath. And then finally, entering tone. Now we know we have two of them in Thai. We would have ho mo a go, which would be mak. And then we have ho mo a go. So each of these are dead. We have mak mak, both with aspiration originally in the front. So you have this ho, but it's lost. But we keep we still keep it in the spelling. So this equivalent writing would be. More ah uh, short, so we put that to make it short. Go, and then we can just put the suck tone again, and then this one mark. We would write the same more ah uh, go with a long ah, uh, and we can put again the suck tone because we know the suck is equivalent to writing this ha at the front, and then this finally we have the ones without the ha, so that would be more mehanakat go, which would be mat in modern Thai. And more with a long vowel mark, so that's mark mark, which would turn into more a uh, go short vowel, and we have that nak tone, and we know that short, we know that's dead from the go, so we don't need to write anything else. And then long mark, and we take this nak tone again, and that's the equivalent of killing this. Actually, it's not necessary because you actually know that these are long and short dead. Looking at the endings. But I'll keep it there because Vietnamese does. So look at that. We have a full, robust system of writing the tones in Thai. And then all we have left is to fill in the consonants. So we have, ko, 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 ngo. Now, some people want that as a G. I really don't want to, but maybe you could. Now this one, I'm going to say this is a ta. If you look in IPA. This is ta, and many languages like Indonesian, like you would write the word for fast, they write it like this, cepat. This is j, so it's actually that letter. Some English speakers want to use j, so if you want to use g or j, okay. But what happens later if we have some dialects that actually have a g and a j? Then you've already used it up here. So I'm going to use ka, cha, and this is ch, ch, s, and then this is again ch, ny, or just n. This one was in Vietnamese. We use that symbol there, da, because this was originally a throaty n. If you want to use a normal d, it's fine. And then we have ta, a throaty, or the, remember these are all cut off in the throat, so these are stopped throat. And so that would be da ta, and we have ta, ta, and na. Now these are Sanskrit letters that we don't actually have real Thai words starting in this, so we could knock all those out. And these ones are exactly the same. So da, ta, 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 na. And then these ones again, we have stop throat b, ba, stop throat p, ba, aspirated pa, and then fa. It makes this affricate sound. And we have the same here, pa fa. They mirror pa ma. We can actually use those now. Now we have this ya ra la wa. This was actually originally a verb, but it turned into a wa. These are semi vowels. This was originally sha sha sha. So you could put those, but I'm just going to put those sa sa sa. This one is a stop throat, and basically it's whatever the vowel is. So if I wrote this, it would be a. Ah. If I wrote this, it would be e. So I don't actually have a letter that I need to make up for this. And this is the h that we've talked about already. So look at this. 
And I can actually use this spelling now. So if I write this with no tone marker, what happens with a letter with no tone marker? Well, that's the only one that we can have. So it must be this high class here. So this would be there, leg, car. So we don't actually have to put any special thing in to indicate this class. All we need to use is the Vietnamese tone marker. And here you have it. You have a robust writing system, a Romanized writing system using the Vietnamese principles, which use Chinese principles of tones as well over Thai and it works. So let's use this as a legend that we just made. And so I'm going to write this out in my new phonetic script and it's going to blow your mind. Watch this. This would be one. I'm just going to write it without tones yet. So one knee me. So that means one knee day. This there are one knee me there are today. This would be lie long ah e. This would be con many people like con. Then this would be ma to come. This one would be unaspirated k short ah and it's dead ma gut. And then this is aspirated M with this huh, but we don't need it. So I'm just going to write ma, which means dog ma. So if I said this in Thai, it would be There are many people that came and bit the dog today. Crazy sentence, but it lets me show you something. Watch this. I'm going to put the tone markers in. So one, this is a low class one, one, one low class normal voice. So let's have a look at here. Low class, normal voice. What's the tone marker? It's actually this. Huyen. So I would write one like this. Now, people who speak Central Thai are saying, no, 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 you can't do that because one is this common tone. That's only Bangkok Thai. And it's only Bangkok Thai where the word one is this common tone going across. Many other dialects of Thai have that actual word pronounced one or one or one. It could be anything. It's just Bangkok Thai that has this common tone. So just bear with me. I'm going to put this same equivalent tone marker huyen, over that. So one ni. Okay, so we've got a low class with a meitor. So what would that be? Low class with meitor. This is the nga. So this would be one ni. Mi is the same as this one. So it's got this shak as well. Lai. Now we have this aspiration here and there's no other thing. So this aspiration, that would be this one. So no tone marker. Khon. And so we have, again, this low class, which used to be a gurt turned into a kurt now. So it's the same as this. So I'm going to put this tone marker, the huyen tone marker from Vietnamese. Ma, the same as this one again. It's the huyen because it's a low class and no tone marker there, which means it comes from this one here. So I better write that in Thai, by the way. So that's there. And so that would be um, ma. And then the word ka. So we know it's dead. It's short dead from this stop throat. That would come from here. So we use the shak. Okay. So again, shak on top of that. And then ma. Again, for dog, we have this ha at the beginning. No other tone marker. So that would be here. We actually have the word ma, which is no tone marker. So in Thai... If I were to write the tones, it would be one me lai corn ma ga ma. So one ni me lai corn ma ga ma. And you think, well, those don't really match these contours. They're not supposed to. Remember, they're just representing classes of tones. They don't have to represent the pitch contour. But look at this. I'm going to show you something mind blowing. I'll show you how this would be rendered in Isan. You ready? So I'm going to do the same tones. So what I'm going to do is the same word, same spelling. And all I'm going to do is render these as Isan. So one knee would be one knee. Okay. In Isan, you say the word for day is mu, but just bear with me in this. If I were reading this according to Isan phonology, it would be one knee, me. Lai corn would be lai corn. Ma. Gat. Ma. One knee, me lai corn, ma gat ma. One knee, me lai corn, ma gat ma. Look at that. 
these shapes that were influenced from Vietnamese, that Vietnamese had these, so basically the Huyen, it went down, so they used this downstroke. It actually matches Isan and these older forms of Thai. That is mind blowing. Wan Ni, Wan Ni, you see that? This is crazy. So this system that I've just developed, if you use the Vietnamese tone markers, which actually will tell you what class, whether it's Axon Song Kang Tam, high, middle or low class, without having to write an H in to show that they're there, you could actually use to write Thai perfectly in Romanized script using the Vietnamese tone markers, which are actually representing the traditional Chinese tone classes, which are actually rendered in Thai as well. That is mind blowing. You want to see something else mind blowing? Just before I finish, they have this word Viep. So that's how you write the word to work in Vietnamese. Het Viep is Ngan. You might know Tham Ngan from Bangkok Thai, but actually in Isa and other places, they say Het Viep um, to work. Have a look if we wrote this in Thai. So in Thai, we write this. You've got the word there. This is the ear and then Ko. But if I were writing it in my new phonetic script, it would be W. E uh, and what's the tone? So I've got a dead low class. So what is that? Nah. Oh my God. The spelling of this word in Thai or Lao is identical almost to the spelling in Vietnamese. Let's have a look at another word. This is the word to hate in Vietnamese. Get, get. This is the word to hate in Thai. Clear. Okay, so let's see how we would spell this in Thai. We could do and that is long dead, but it comes from this category here. So what is the actual tone marker? Shak again. Oh my goodness. Let me just write that with a G now. So this word here, get in Vietnamese meaning hate, gliat. If you look at it and pronounce it according to Vietnamese phonology from Thai, but in Thai, it just happens this uh, uh, tone turns into uh, so that becomes clear. But in Isan, that would be get. So the tone is actually much closer to the tone in Vietnamese. That's crazy. And it makes sense too. look at the vicinity, Vietnam to Isan, Northeastern Thailand. Um, the tones are actually much closer. So there you go. This has been a crazy round the world or at least round Asia trip of phonology, of letters, of romanizations, of tones. You've had a masterclass in Thai, Vietnamese and Chinese phonology. I hope that this makes sense for you. You might want to go back and watch this again and again and again. But actually, it makes sense if you understand how Vietnamese tones work, how they're linked into Chinese, how Thai tones work, how that's linked into the system and it's all linked into Sanskrit. This would pretty much be your romanization script that can go on into the future, regardless of time, geography, or whatever dialect of Thai you use. I'm Stuart J. Raj. Don't forget to come into jakeacademy.com, scan the QR code, come and join in the discussion in the Discord server. Subscribe to Minecraft. I'm Stuart J. Raj. I'll see you on the other side. Yeah.